The second door of liberation is uh, signlessness. Sign here means the appearance, and many of us are fooled by the appearance of things. When the cloud, yeah, when your favorite cloud is no longer there on the sky, you are sad. By the way, you have to remember that 70% of, of our body is made of cloud. The clouds are inside and not just on the sky. And every, every day you continue to drink uh, clouds. When a cloud is no longer seen in the sky, you think that the cloud is not there. And you think that your cloud now belongs to the realm of (laughs) non-being. Yesterday it belonged to the realm of being, but today it belongs to the realm of non-being. That's wrong perception. You think your cloud has died. But the other day we have said that uh, it's impossible for a cloud to die. Because to die means uh, from something you become absolutely nothing. A cloud cannot become nothing. A cloud can become the rain, the snow, the ice. So if you are caught by the appearance of cloud, you are not capable of seeing your cloud in its continuation. You have to see your cloud in the, in the rain. Hello, my cloud. I see you in your new form, the rain. And that you are free from sun. And when you drink your tea, and you see your cloud inside. Hello, my cloud. Now I see you in the form of tea. So you are free from the appearance, so that's signlessness. So the person you used to be with, she is no longer there. And you grieve for her loss. You are despair because uh, the person you love is no longer there. And you believe that she has come, she has uh, passed into the realm of non-being. She is no longer there. She has died. But that's not true. It's impossible for a cloud to die. It's impossible for you to die. And you'll be loved to die. If you have the eyes of signlessness, you can see your your beloved one in her new form. You can see the cloud in the rain. And the rain is calling you, darling, darling, I'm here. Don't you see me? You don't see her in the rain. You don't see the cloud in the rain because you are caught by appearance. You do not have the eyes of signlessness. So when you see a block of eyes, you can see your cloud. When you see the snow falling, uh, you see your cloud. Nothing can die. And that is why with the eyes of signlessness, 
with the concentration of signlessness, you are free from the notion of being and non-being, birth and death. And you don't suffer anymore. Even from your own death, because you cannot die. We have to learn how to let go of our notions, including the notion of being and non-being, birth and death. We believe that uh, now is life. Death will be for later on in 20 years, 30 years, 50 years. But the fact is not that. Death is happening right now and right here. In this very present moment, many cells in our body are dying. Thousands and thousands of them are dying. Death is happening right here and right now, and you don't know, you think that death will be much later on. And death is very crucial for, for birth. Cells have to die in order to, for other cells to be born. Thousands and thousands of cells are being born in this very moment, and birth and death, they like to be together, like the right and the left. If you think that today is only birth and death will be 100 years later, you are wrong. Birth and death, they happen at the same time. Many thousands of cells are dying in this very moment. And you are so busy, you have no time to organize their funerals. (laughs) (laughs) And many of uh, the new, new cells are born, you have no time to celebrate uh, birthday, their birthday. <laughs> so where there is birth, there is death. And death is not destructive. Death allows birth to be possible. It's like the left and the right. Without the left, the right cannot be. And you have to learn to look at reality in that way. The birth of something is always the, the death of something, is always the birth of something. The death of a cloud is the birth of the rain. If the cloud does not die, how can the rain be born? But that is when we talk about birth and death. In reality, there's no birth and no death. So two, two layers of truth on the conventional level, we have we see uh, conventional truth. We see on the level of uh, the conventional truth, we see there is birth and death. The cloud dies in order for for the rain to be born, and the rain to have to die in order for the tea to be born. But that's not dying. That's transformation. You always continue. And that is why we have to train ourselves to look with the eyes of signlessness. And you'll be free from all kind of uh, anguish, fear, despair. And scientists have found out that matter and energy, their nature is also the nature of no birth and no death. If you are still looking for the beginning of the cosmos, if you still believe if you still believe in the Big Bang as the beginning of the cosmos, you are still caught in the notion of birth and death. If you believe in the Big Bang, and then you have to believe in the big crunch later on. <laughs> And if scientists, they still uh, uh, 
put the question of the birth and the death of cosmos, they violate the first law of thermodynamics. There is no birth, there is no death. There is only a continuation. So with that kind of looking deeply, we touch the nature of no birth and no death, and we throw away these notions of birth and death coming and going, and we are free. There is no longer any fear, any anger, any despair. That is the second door of liberation. It's not philosophy. It's a practice. Mindfulness, concentration, bring insight. And when you get the insight of emptiness and sunlessness, you are free. The sixth, the, the last exercise of mindful breathing proposed by the Buddha is letting go, letting go of notions, including the notion of birth and death, being and non-being, coming and going. When you come to a practice center, you learn many kinds of practice that can bring you relief from fear, anger, distress. But the greatest relief you can get is only when you touch your nature of no birth and no death, no being and no non-being. And if uh, we do not have the time to meditate, to contemplate, to touch, uh, to practice uh, the concentration of emptiness and silentness, we cannot touch our true nature of no birth and no death. Let us imagine a wave appearing on the surface of the ocean. And the way may be caught in ideas of uh, beginning, ending, birth and death, coming up, coming down, being there, not being there. And she will suffer a lot because of these notions. But if uh, the wave uh, come home to herself and touch her true nature, which is uh, water, and then she loses all kinds of notions. It's nice to begin, it's nice to end. It's nice to come up, it's nice to go down. She can live the life of a wave, but she can also live the life of water. And the moment when she touches her true nature, water, she loses all kinds of fear. The fear of beginning, the fear of ending, the fear of being going up, the fear of going down, the fear of being or not being. And the water does not have to go and search, uh, the, the, the wave does not go, have to go to search for water. She is water right here and right now. And that is, that is, uh, that is true with us. We don't have to go and search for nirvana. We don't have to go and search for our nature of no birth and no death. We are well established in it. Our true nature is nature of no birth and no death. And that kind of awakening, realization, will help us lose, release all kind of fear and discrimination. And true joy of living will be possible.
Let us uh, visualize a cloud in the sky. And one half of her has become the rain. And uh, the rain can be seen now as a, a stream of water, a source. And the cloud above looking down and see himself, part of himself, part of herself down on earth. And he waved to the, the creek and said, hello, myself down there. <laughs> I will join very soon. I will join you very soon. Have a good time down there. You do not have to, to wait until the dissolution of this body in order to be reborn into something else. The cloud can be, can be reborn into, half the cloud can be reborn into rain and snow, and half still retain the form of a cloud. And that is why we have to look with the eyes of signlessness and see our continuation. You already have your continuation. Look around. And that is my practice. When you look into this direction and you say, this is Thai, that's not, that's not the whole truth. This is only a bit, tiny part of Thai. You can see Thai in a different way. If you go to uh, Vietnam, Thai's uh, homeland, you see, you see Thai is there at this very moment, operating trying to help people to practice. He has continued, he has already his continuation there. And there are many prisons in Europe, America, where our friends have been coming to help people to breathe, to walk and suffer less. Thay is there in these prisons. You have to see Thay like that. If you think that his body is Thay, that's wrong perception. So Thay does not have to wait until this body disintegrates uh, completely in order to be reborn. No, he has been reborn in many forms. And there's some of Thay in yourself now. So that is the wisdom, the eyes of signlessness. You are not caught in the forms. 